garden that I have. Finally got some rain. <sighs> got something to be happy about. And now it feels like a sauna. It's, it's like exhausting, humid, ugh, disgusting weather, but we did get rain, like an, almost an inch, I believe, between yesterday and today, which is good. Um, but everything is like really, I don't know, everything is kind of like drab right now. Um, all the color is like not intense anymore. So now I have to start thinking about like cutbacks, number one, which I'm not gonna do yet, but that's coming. Um, one thing I wanted to address was um, gotten questions about cone flowers, whether I deadhead them to encourage new blooms or if I just leave the seed heads on there and is there a difference if you do or you don't deadhead. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, I'm going to start with these because this cone flower, I actually don't um, deadhead because for two reasons. One is because I like to collect seeds from some of my echinacea. Uh, the second reason is it also feeds the birds. Um, the third reason you may not want to um, deadhead is because if you want to fill in a space, um, you can also let the seeds just hit the ground and grow new plants. So there's three different things that, you know, you have to consider as to whether or not you want to deadhead or not. If you're just looking to create more blooms and more pretty stuff, um, you can cut these back and the side blooms will come up. There's a few echinacea though that will do, will produce those side blooms whether you deadhead them or not. So as long as you don't mind like sort of the faded flowers, you'll get some of these little side blooms like this and the pinker ones um, to come up anyway, whether you deadhead or not. I have not deadheaded that and those are producing some, um, some pretty pink blooms. So in the case of Kismet Intense Orange, it is not that intense anymore. That was a big stink bug. Um, but they have buds coming. See how these little down here also? Um, there's side buds. Let's see it better over there. There you go. Um, there's side buds coming. That one may, it may be in your best interest to deadhead those if you're looking to get those blooms faster. Uh, but that one, you know, you have to, you know, you have to figure out what you're deadheading for. If you're gonna deadhead just to get these blooms to grow bigger, that's a good plant to do it on because Kismet Intense Orange has not sent up any side shoots yet. Um, and it's probably because it's focusing on making those seed heads in here as opposed to producing the new blooms. So while there are some coming, it's still gonna be slower if you don't deadhead that. Um, let's see, Baja Burgundy. You know, this this one's still producing. Oh, look at the little baby bumble. Um, this one is still producing all the bright flowers. So you got little ones back here. And look at the seed heads. They're still like, you have a lot of the older ones that are dying back. These are starting to turn black. Like this one, is this even, is this even producing seeds? Actually, this might be for that double scoop. But in the base, oh yeah, there's a couple in there. So you see these little... At the end, see that little arrowhead? Looks like little porcupines. Yeah, at the end of it though, there's a there's a little triangular sort of weird looking. This is the seed. So that little guy. So if you, you can collect seeds. I mean, this is kind of wet. I'd have to dry them out. But anyway, some of them like Adobe Orange. This one is actually sending up some brighter new blooms. So see some of the side buds are blooming on this one. And I've left all of these blooms on. They're getting a little sloppy now that it's rained. But so it's really just a matter of your preference and what your goal is. If your goal is to get new, those little side buds to bloom, definitely deadhead. Um, now's the perfect time for that. If you are looking to save your seeds, you don't have to deadhead everything either. You can just do a few, like wherever the side buds are, cut the stalk off or deadhead that particular stalk so that the bloom will um will grow faster but yeah so that's one thing oh you want to know what another variety that does really well without deadheading is the sangarita one um that one is laying down i'm not even going to bother it but this one has produced um lots of buds and also look it's it's actually starting to put up the little the really bright side shoot so so how long will they do that for 
Until when? Not, September? Until October? Until, until it has enough, um, basically enough flowers to cre keep creating the seeds. Like the whole purpose of the flower is to create, it's to like procreate. So if it's trying to create a seed so that it can create new plants, um, if you keep cutting the buds off, you're gonna encourage the plant to rebloom. So it, it, it will do it as long as it's ready and willing and has the energy and the water and the nutrients to do it. Um, this one is actually sending up, this is um, intense orange. That's actually sending up a couple of them. So this one did really well. So this is lovely lolly. Do you remember? So these, these are obviously one of the first blooms that we had and they are like ready. They're just ready to be snipped off. But look at all these other side blooms that have come up. So they're not as big as the original flowers, but they sent up a ton. Like the rebloom on that was amazing considering I have not deadheaded that at all. Um, Baja Burgundy, always, always a good one. Look at this. Still sending up flowers and they're almost like as tall as the original blooms. I just love that one. So, you know, the Echinacea purpurea, it does send up some blooms they're really like uh, shorter on the stem i don't know if you can tell back there but the top the top blooms are really faded but down in there are some brighter pink um reblooms so that's that's the uh gist on a bunch of different varieties of cone flowers and whether you want a deadhead or not is really dependent upon what your goal is um and the actual plant that you have because some are just some are just going to send those sides but side buds up and bloom again regardless of whether you deadhead which i like because i like to save my seeds um but anyway you know what look at this whoa i almost love the the pre-bloom on that i know that's screaming cherries and you know what that bloomed already early in the season and it's re-blooming that's the re-bloom scape so if you just if you have daylilies or you're buying daylilies and you get a rebloomer, this is why you get a rebloomer because this should be dead and gone already, like kind of done for the season. But look at that! I'm gonna get a massive bloom tomorrow, and you bet you I'm gonna post it. It looks like it could cause some serious damage. I know it's got like it's really cool. I love that. It looks like that Venus flytrap. Well, if we're missing a pug, I know where to look. Yeah, right. Um, the other thing, I had a seedling bloom today. Um, another one. Uh, this one. Was Your dog is not happy. Large purple. No, I hear her. Um, large purple. This was a large purple seedling that I had times killer green bananas. And that's kind of faded now, but I'll put a picture of what it looked like this morning. Holy cow. But this, isn't that fancy? She's kind of faded, but I'll show you what it looked like when she first opened. And that's a good sized flower. So it so, fades that quick. Huh? Fades that quick. Well, one, it was like raining all day today. So considering it rained, I mean, I don't consider that terribly faded. Do you? Still got good color. I didn't see it when it came out, really. You showed me a quick photo. Yeah, well, I'll show you. And another fun thing, too, um, on Lily Lane, I had... I have a couple, actually, the, these two seedlings that have bloomed for the first time already, they're still going. I still have four buds going. I made some crosses on those, which took, um, and have a proliferation. You guys know what a proliferation is? Do you know what a proliferation is? Um, Down here. Yeah. See this on, on the scape? See this? It's a whole new plant. It's an identical plant to the one that it's growing on. So... I'm getting like, I have an extra plant growing. So I, it's eventually I can take that off and pot it up or plant it with that and have an extra plant. Um, so I have not only buds or pods coming, I have, I had a ton of blooms on that. Gorgeous flowers. I have a proliferation, which means I get an extra plant and hold on, you have to come over here. Look at this. It already has a re-blooming scape. This is only one fan. It already has another scape blooming, like coming up. So I'm getting a re an instant rebloom on that, a proliferation, beautiful buds, huge flowers. I love that. Oh my God, I have another one here. So what? Look at, so this is the same cross. Um, it's just, you know, these two seeds were in the same pod. So it's the same exact cross. Look, 
and they're both producing an instant rebloom. <gasps> that is so fun. Was it the heat wave that caused oh the perspiration? God, honestly, or? I, this, um, this has gotten water with the vegetable garden like sprinkler. So I'm, I'm like surprised that these are even doing anything because holy cows have been dry. You wanna talk how dry it is. I don't even want you to take a gander over there. Uh, it's, we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, so this one was a clown pant seedling that just, you know, it was okay. It had a pretty flower. Wasn't anything that I absolutely loved, but I can tell you, look at this. This one is the master's voice, which you know I love. That was my first, you know, my first dab into expensive daylilies. That's the master's voice times killer green bananas. I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm like, and look it back here, same, um, the same cross. Look, I have another, I have escape coming on this plant. So that's exciting. Then I have Cheryl May Taylor. Let's see, Cheryl, what are all these little bugs in here? Look at this. Oh man, I think we have termites. Look. That is not good. No, that is not good. And look at, they're all in the ground. Look right yes. here. Look, yes. all in between. Oh, they're over here too. Uh oh. Look at that. That may not be good for Don't the Don't you knock line. my buds off. Yeah. Oh man, right here and here. All right. Man, they're all over. Well. Is that what those are? Are they termites? Looks like it. What do you do about that? Call the uh, exterminator, I guess. You can't, yeah, but you can't spray that stuff around my plants. Well, huh? maybe they're good for it. Who knows? Right. Anyway, so. Um, they eat so wood, yes, I have, so. So, Master's Voice times Killer Green Bananas. I have scapes coming. And look at this. So, I have one, two, three, four. Four branching buds. Woohoo! Uh, or four. <laughs> is that what it is? Yes. Four branches with buds. Yes. Um, and then this one is a clown pant seedling, which I'm actually going to get to see bloom, maybe, if the deer don't eat it. Um, that is Cheryl May Taylor times Purple Panther. That cross was the pod parent, and clown pants was the pollen parent. That is the same exact cross that is on this one, and look how different the shape of the, um, the buds are. And look at this. Like, I'm totally intrigued by this. This is like already showing teeth, but the buds are little. And I don't know if that looks like that because it's dry and because it's been high heat and it really shouldn't look like that. But I'm gonna, even if it's a little mini with teeth, it'll be cute. Is um, it possible the termites are eating the mulch because mulch has wood in it or no? I have never had those in my, oh my God, they're everywhere. I guess it looks like we're building I a hope, new garden fence well, next week. I hope to week. God that they don't hit the house because that's sided with wood. Well, that did you ever awful. watch Pink Panther? Ugh. Yeah. What? He had a horrible time with one termite. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, um, what else? Everything just looks really bad right now. <laughs> it's all starting to, like, we've turned the corner, but we're going to do, I'm going to film exactly what I do when I start doing cutbacks and when I start turn, like sort of moving things around and taking things out and you know, giving things some room to breathe. Um, look at this one. Look how big that baby is. This is a late bloomer also that is called Pampered Puss. That is a diploid. It kind of looks a little like you. Mm. Today, a little resemblance. Lately, yes, I, I do have a Pampered Puss. Um, what else? These are our um, coneflowers that I grew from seed. Those look, look at the foliage on them. So this one is not in the shade. If you remember the shade garden tour, um, I was like, wow, I have tons of like big foliage. Uh, and it's happening over here too with the ones that I had from seed. And this one is so pretty. Look at this. This is a Mamma Mia. That's gotta be a Mamma Mia that I moved because I, I just can't imagine that that grew from seed. Although it may, cause I don't know, look at- Go let that dog out, my goodness gracious. Go ahead, go, go calm her down, please. <laughs> let her oh, out. Yeah. So I can't imagine that I didn't grow that from seed cause it's just now blooming. 
if I if it was a, a move from the other gardens or from one that I pulled, um, it would have already bloomed like at the same time as the other ones. So I don't know. That is pretty wild. Yeah, it's pretty. Like, how is there anything left on it for that bee to be harvesting? That's a brand new bloom. It what is. Are you talking about? Like, how many days old is that bloom? Not that many. It's still bright. Look at those blooms. Those were bright. Now they're not. So those these are, are pretty much done. Most of the bees are like, eh, yeah. been there, done that. Yeah. So once the color fades, that usually is a good indicator once, that- Once the color fades, then the, the, basically the seeds, anything that got pollinated, um, it's done its job. And now it's just gonna create the, great create seeds if it's gonna create seeds. And if it's not too dry, because I have a few that look black and I don't know that I'll have seeds in there. Um, but, you know, look at the, the bee ball or the, um, yeah, the bee balm is looking pretty sad. There's nothing left on that. But I do have a couple dahlias. You want to see them? Sure. I got some buds coming on um, carding mill. Look at this. Once the Japanese beetles left, or went in the ground, I should say, we got a whole new flush of stuff coming, which is good because I have some black spot on the leaves. So hopefully it'll, it won't... Uh, it won't um, take away from the blooms that are coming. So this one is Baron Katie. Look at this baby. That's a beauty. I love that one. That one was a lot bigger last year, but I'm assuming it's because of the rain. But this is just pretty. I love that color. Any, any color like that. Um, when these uh, dahlias didn't do that well and they didn't get that big, I kind of sprinkled sunflowers and cosmos in here. It was a darn good idea. You know why? I have sunflowers and cosmos with buds on them. So even though I'm not getting a ton of dahlias this year, I'm getting other flowers in there. Uh, but, and I also, look at this. I have a melon. Whoa. Yes, and I have another baby melon over there. So even though it's dry as heck, or was, I'm still growing a melon. Go what kind of it. melon is that? I think it's honeydew. And it's not my favorite, but somehow I have a plant of it, so. Oh, uh, look at this is awesome. This is like my dream dahlia. That is called Gets Crazy. And that was a um, free gift from Swan Island with my order because I spent a lot. So, but that, sometimes the free gifts, you wouldn't normally order them. They're prettier than what you actually ordered. So that's exciting. And what else? What's the one over here that we kind of walked past? That Which looks one? pretty cool. I don't, um, this is cognac. That's one called creme de cognac. There's your little melon. Yep, there's a little one. This one is so cute. Look at it. Actually, so let's do this one first. This one is fire magic, which I love. Then the flowers are definitely smaller than normal, but the plant, it still has the long stems for cutting, which is good. I have to kind of take off the, some of the older blooms. And then this one, I forget what this is called. Jenna. This one is called Jenna. It's so cute, but it's not really for cutting. Although this one is starting to get a long stem on it. I kind of thought I chose dahlias for, for cutting, which meant they would grow on the long stems. But for some reason, a lot of these, maybe it's just the year, but um, you know, how are you going to cut these? You're not. You're, but I'll enjoy them because they're beautiful. Um, these have about had it. My straw flowers are going to open a little bit. I still have some of those coming. This is hula. This one is amazing. This has been a flower powerhouse, man. All season long. Isn't that gorgeous? Hula. And that's and that's bright. Like I don't even know if the camera is capturing how bright that thing is. So we do have some. I like the sunflower. Let's see her uh what is the name of that one? Um that is called I self sewed right here and i left it there um this one i have no idea and look at this is kind of weird what do you mean is that from oh, bird seed oh, no. oh my goodness I what happened out. i took it right out oh. I tried, this was already hanging down and i decided to take off ah, bug um oh man well you know what i guess, I guess we're this gonna one, have a new arrangement this one we? can come in the house with me i guess and this one i'm just gonna leave for the birds because it looks like Actually, they are. They're starting to pick at the seeds already. 
See in there. So wouldn't you want to keep some of those seeds? Uh, well, these aren't quite ready yet for growing. They have to. They do have to mature. So is it so. possible that next year this, this would grow right back without okay, you doing grew anything? And I didn't plant it. It found its way there, or somehow it reseeded from one that was there. I don't really recall this color, so that's kind of funny. Um, I don't know that I would have picked like a yellow and brownish one, but it's cute. So there you have it. Um, that's kind of like the story of my season this year. I try to fix something and I break something, so. Now are those <laughs> edible for humans, those yes. type of sunflower seeds? I think, yeah, you can. I don't, I'm not sure like on the actual varieties, which ones like you should eat, but uh, yes, they are. They're kind of cool. No, I like them, very colorful. Um, yeah. Yeah, these definitely really... look like they've had enough. You know what? They're really all the pollinators are kind of going to um, the, the the zinnias and the dahlias on the patio garden. Look it. There's another little termite on the top. Oh boy, they're all over the ground. Hmm. What's happening? Are we being invaded? I don't know. Maybe we got some infected. I need mulch. to go. Actually, I need to take some. Um, I need to take some video of that and make sure that I know what those are because they're in the wood. I'm assuming they are pretty much, but I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. So, oh my God, look at this gorgeous dude. You ready for this? <gasps> ah! He is almost ready. Oh, that is a gorgeous monarch. Are you going to catch him and I don't know. I might. I have room. Hold him hostage. I know because now he's big enough to make a meal out of. So, you know, we have a whole bunch of bluebirds that fledged and they're being taught how to, I you know, find insects and eat them. So I really should. I actually think I should check. I probably have a whole other family going on here. Now, wasn't there an article that said you shouldn't be, uh, you know, uh, hosting or doing so listen monarchs yes, or something. everybody has an opinion but i can tell you if you are they say like to do 10 or less basically because the strongest survive out in the normal in the wild you know whether they get eaten or they get attacked by those tachnid flies um you know it's survival of the fittest so they think by you rearing all of the caterpillars that you find, you're sort of not allowing that selective process to happen. Um, but we don't have that many. We, we kind of get a couple broods. <laughs> broods. We get a couple, like, you know, a couple little generations. And we don't get that many. So it's better. In my mind, I feel like I'm helping because the more we release, the more, um, the more have a chance to make it and migrate and... All that good stuff. I don't see any more, though. The caterpillar hunter. It's kind of hard. I, it's a big mess in here is what it is. And there goes my, my sunflower. So what's going on inside the garden? We really haven't looked at that either. We're not, I don't think we're going to either. Why? Because it's horrible. What's wrong with I it? I have not been in there. You can't even get through it. It's a jungle. That's what I like about it. Well, then go on your safari. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Well, I'm afraid to go in there without you as my guide. Oh, my God. What? There's like a brown. Oh, God. Do I have a vole? What is a vole? Oh, my God. Something just ran and it's brown. Are you going to kill a mole on camera? He's going to get eaten alive by termites. Oh my God, something is happening. Well, why don't we go in the other way? Oh man, I've been talking with people about voles and I'm like, no, nah, I don't have voles. Unless that's a really wet chipmunk because it did just rain. Well, oh man, look, there's more termites coming out of the ground. Should I be stepping on those? I don't know. Maybe. Oh they're... my God, look at what it is. Okay, I'm really getting old. Look what it is. What? It's a giant toad. Oh. <laughs> it's a big, giant black toad. That makes me feel better. I literally, I, th I didn't see it hop. I thought it literally Mom. ran. Yeah? Can I come sit? Sure. 
So welcome to the jungle. You yeah. can uh, safari away. I'm not being your tour guide. This is like a disaster and a half. Where? Where's the big toad? Oh, right in here behind the trellis. Look. He's back there somewhere. I'm Look alone. down here. Look down. Way in there. I thought it was like a really weird. Where? Yeah. You have to just get in there. He's he's hopping. He's hopping toward the other he side. He had far too much time to escape, Emilou. I feel he's like this blending. is my this is my torch. Oh, look. So one thing that I that did do really well are those sunflowers. And look at how beautiful. They don't have like a dark center like normal. They're fuzzy and frilly and just beautiful. And obviously, they mature their seeds pretty quickly cuz look at this. Mom. Look. Wow. And the birds are eating them already and it's not even done flowering. Like that's pretty amazing. Look at the height of that one right there. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, it's also two feet off the ground. So, so. you didn't mean to plant that yeah, or did. you did? Yeah, I put that in there. Oh my Lord. Hey, look. What? Oh my God. We have a zucchini ready. Actually, this is the perfect time to harvest. <laughs> Any bigger than this, you get like seeds in the cavity and you don't want that. I don't think you've been paying oh, attention. Here. You didn't even know you had a Honestly, zucchini. No, I, I have no idea what that is. It's that. like Houdini creating Ooh, zucchini. Look at this. Actually, this is exciting. Okay, this is an absolute embarrassment, but th but there's production. <laughs> it can't be that bad. Look, well, come here. I, I'm, I can't. Yes, you can. Without look. trampling stuff. Look. Look at wow. the size of that. Dude, if that turns red and the chipmunks don't get it, I'm going to be thrilled. So basically, you do better gardening when you don't know that you're actually growing anything. Well, neglect does yield results. Emma Lou, what? take this poppy stem and don't turn it upside down. Go put it with the other ones on the porch. Thank you. Ooh, more rain. What do we else we got in here? I have ginger. Look at this is my ginger. Remember over the winter, I had to pre-sprout ginger. Um, I don't know what it's doing. Am I going to get ginger? I have ignored it. I, really I would have, say. I have no idea what it's doing. And it, I don't know what it's supposed to, I honestly think it's supposed to be huge. And it's like a foot tall. So, I don't know. Um, what else? There's a dahlia in there. Looks like the weed eater went on vacation here. Yeah, there's more purple poppy seed stems. We got some yellow squash coming, some flowers, green zebra tomatoes, lots of disease. You gonna be able to get out of there? Beautiful zinnias though. You know what? They if are nice. Holy cow, look at this. Let me out. I'm like buckled in. Oh, and I'm soaked. Oh, look, more. So listen, like, do I pick this right now? Cause I know I'm gonna forget. And like two wow. days, two days from now, that's going to be way too big. Why is that so long? I know, but we have a look, we have a little baby watermelon too. Do you see it? Yeah. Little tiny baby watermelons. You have some production going on in here. Oh, I got corn. Look, I got corn. And this looks really bad. It's starting to dry out. How do you know when corn is ready? That corn looks a little deformed. Yep, it looks a little bad, but look at the the other half of it looks gorgeous. It's not too bad, yeah. Just chop off the top. Yeah. Nobody had to know. Let's see what we got here. Cut them in half. I'd eat that. Yeah, the kids it's would. Um, I probably could have watered a little more consistently. I'm pretty sure that's why that looks like that. Um, but anyway, so we have some stalks that are coming. They're pretty sizable. We have more tomatoes. Ooh. Sparkle pepper. This is not entirely ripe, but I'm gonna get it before the uh, chipmunks do. Now is that hot? Okay. Nope. These are sweet peppers, look. There's a whole bunch in here. See the purple ones? All these purple peppers. Those are gonna turn red and then they're gonna be sweet. If you eat them like that, they taste like green peppers. Not my favorite. What's a purple pepper you know what taste like? Like a green pepper. Uh, if it's not ripe, a purple pepper will taste like a green pepper. When it's ripe, it'll taste like a sweet pepper. Look, you know what this is? Take a guess. You gotta show the leaves. Um, rhubarb. Nope. Parsley. Nope. 
Uh, um, oh, oh, it starts with a C. Celery. Oh, yeah, celery. That is not what you thought. Well, it starts with a C, doesn't it? It does, but I know that's not what you Yeah, meant. close enough, but I'd anyway, say. Yeah, so look at lots of moonbeam. Look at the little yellow pears. I love those. These have more of a tart um, flavor to them. But look, they're literally, go. they're everywhere. Look, I have little trusses everywhere of these things. So they're tomatoes. Yes, they are tomatoes. Wow, are we getting, like, getting some... Oh, a baby one! Finally getting this some is rain. so cute. Oh what wow, the watermelon's climbing up the right here. I see him. It's climbing up the sunflower. Can I touch your melon? No. No, you cannot. <laughs> and this thing. Figured you'd say that. Holy crap! <gasps> You're gonna laugh. Uh, oh my god this is what happens when you don't know you have things growing i can't even get in oh my goodness <laughs> are you oh kidding me <laughs> that's like a world record zucchini oh my god this is a club you're gonna hurt your back i know you didn't notice that well obviously it's been a while since I've wow been in dude that thing is like are you this <sighs> has got to be like five pounds Yes. Oh my God. This is like what you hand off to your neighbors and you're like, here, I grew that for you. And they open it up and they try to eat it and it's like seedy as hell. Well, I'd let you touch my zucchini. Oh God, you would. Well. No, only you. Ah. Um, yeah. You know what? I may hit you with this. If too. you keep your comments to yourself. Yeah, and, well. And your hands. Oh God. I know. It's five. How am I supposed pounds? to hold this? I'm Cute. filming. Cute. Oh, we actually have yellow squash, but I gotta go. I'm, I gotta go this way. Maybe. Yeah, I don't think I can walk through that oh. way. Sorry for the crazy filming. Wow, more termites. Dude, we might have an infestation. I'm waiting on. for a jaguar to jump out and take us out. This thing looks like it wants to strangle me. Yeah, um, what's up with the beans back ooh, there? Look at this is perfect too. Yellow squash. So exciting. This you're supposed to be able to eat also. It's, it's almost like we're raiding someone else's garden. I know. Isn't I, know. It? <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, a pepper. Another look at this. Wow. So, you know what? One of the things that um, I did, which I, I got a lot of questions about originally with the tour, was like, you know, I have a, a pepper plant over there. I have one here. I have one there. Because if the chipmunks find it there, then you have a better chance of, you know, getting production out of the other ones that you hid in between things. So I have stuff literally scattered. I don't plant in rows or all like sections of things for that reason. But then this is like a vegetable safari hunt. It's kind of fun. Um, lots of kale, the lacinato kale. And look at this. All of this is good. You could eat this if you wanted. And how come we don't? It doesn't um, seem like we ever eat kale. You know what? Kale. This is good for kale chips. But the last time I made kale chips, we were like, we weren't like overly thrilled with it, but we could. It'd be healthy, but. I didn't mind the kale chips you made a few years ago. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking for caterpillars. Our dill is about like worn out, but we've had tons of black swallowtails. So, and, and male and female. And I have tons of parsley. <gasps> Holy cow. What happened? Okay, so apparently I picked this. And probably forgot about it. And, and set it down and didn't. But you know what? Nothing ate it. And now it's actually, look it. This week on The Distracted I Gardener. I know. That's pretty much me right there. Um, but we've been eating squash, like a lot of squash, so that's good. Um, what else? Nothing really. We have, oh, I have peppers turning. So this is kind of shady over here, but look, I got little bitty peppers. Bitty peppers. And what kind of peppers are those? Little, they're red peppers, but they're smaller than the ones that have grew in this garden. Are we behind? Shouldn't most of these yeah, be done at this point? Don't forget. Not really. Not if you're fertilizing and actually taking care of your garden. Um, don't forget, I planted up these really late because I was doing cut flowers in the beginning. Ooh, we got good production over there. Look at, look at the tomatoes. <gasps> look at the size of this thing. What? Look at the size of this thing. I swear to God. It's massive. What? The toad? Yes. Oh my God. He's huge. I'm going to go this way. What is going on? What kind of fertilizer are you I'm using send over him here? This way. He is all, he is totally happy. Oh. 
Can you see him? No. I sent him flying that way. Dude, he's like this. He's like the size of my hand. I'm not even kidding. I, you have to get that on film. He's huge. I have tomato. I have cherry tomatoes coming into my peonies. What a mess, man. After the garden tour, I'm like, all right, <laughs> everything's on its own. Uh, what about those awesome tomatoes out back? Can we go check those out? Those are fun. You want to see them? Yes. Right. Maybe we should go down this way. Why? I don't know. We always go over that way. Well, I'm going to put these down. Here, take this squash. It's hurting my back. Ugh. Oh. Ooh, Look at the size of that I thing. Know. Huge. Five, wow. five, that's five pounds. I'm, I'm gonna weigh it. Five pounds for real. Oh, now my feet are getting wet. Oh, some nice pods. I got one pod here that looks like it's starting to turn. I wrote the date, 717. How many days is that? Yeah, 40. So we need another 10 days and that should be ripe. These are kind of cool. What? Yes, I know. This is the. What are they? I don't know. I do have the name of this somewhere in my phone, but I cannot tell you. I didn't actually caption the photo, so I don't know what the variety is, but this I found at Windy Hill Nursery in Great Barrington, or in Stockbridge, Mass. And um, it's gorgeous. I kinda, I, I kinda wish I just had a whole like hillside of it. It's great, but the deer do eat it. Mm. But it's prolific with flowers. Look it. I'm actually getting some buds. <gasps> Holy cow. I'm going to get some bloom on this. Some late bloom. <coughs> Considering I only got like five blooms around the bottom. What else is going on? Anything it's up getting here? awful tall. No, that's the same size every year. Yeah. I got a Woo. <laughs> Oh, girl. Emily. Look at these are like these two were like not even alive when the other ones had blue um growth in the spring and these are now actually looking like plants. These these are diehards, man. I've split these, I've moved them, I neglect them, and now they're going to actually put up some some blooms, some late blooms, which is fine. Holy crabgrass. Um, holy crab grass, seriously. Can, and dandelion, holy crap. Yeah, but how many times have you weeded oh the garden God. this year? Not many. No, but it still looks but pretty look good. Size. I know, but it's really starting to show, like, ugh. Yeah, but. It really is starting to, but anyway, so tomatoes. By the way, this was a very good idea, despite the trampled stuff. Um, I have red sweet corn is this ready i don't know i don't want to pick it early though but check these out this is black beauty wow i mean the leaves are starting to get cranky now at the bottom but um look at that that's like one truss of tomatoes and they look they're so pretty when they first like start coming out look they're half green half black and then they start turning and look at this i mean i had awesome production and this gnarly thing okay this is i'm gonna pick this off yeah maybe i'll leave it look at it it's like four tomatoes in one it's like bumpy and weird see it yeah it's i don't even know what the problem is but anyway but i have more more coming so that's exciting more beautiful dahlias here what is this one? That one's cute. I didn't. I definitely didn't pick that one. Um, but this one is cute too. This one is called Cutie Patootie. See this? Other side. Oh. Oh, it needs to be staked. But look at this. This is Cutie Patootie. This is like hot pink. And I do love it. I see two Cutie Patooties. I love them. I love this. Is that a Cutie Patootie? Nope, that's a zinnia. And look at this guy. So this looks more red on, like more burgundy on film, but it's actually like a deep purple. Isn't that weird? What is it? Um, hold on. Diva. That one is called Diva. 
That's a diva dahlia. Mm. Diva dahlia. These guys are starting to, these are starting to ripen and the chipmunks are beating me to it. Look, they just take them right off. Look, here's the, here's where the truss was. Yeah. So, but anyway, they're, they're, you know, they're entitled to have some, but man, I got to pick them bef like before they're ripe just to save them. This looks okay. It's starting to go, but I do have fruit. And they're not touching this one. So I, this one is, I believe, Bonnie Best tomatoes. So you you can pick those tomatoes I can when pick they're them. green and they'll, but, they'll no, ripen. When they're just starting to turn, yes. But I, haven't, I never had really good luck picking them green and having them turn. They never, that, that's just not something that happens for me. Um, but I do have to start picking these. Look at this. I'm so excited about this one. Oh, my God. Mm. He's going to try and push that back. Well, you're going to have gallons of salsa this year. You would think so, but I have not had but one or two tomatoes off that truss the chipmunks have. It looks like it. And Jack's. Looks like Alvin had a little brunch this morning. Yep, that's what happens. <laughs> and look at, they're smart, man. Look, all of these are not ripe yet. One, two, three, four, five, six of them were ripe. And look, they know. They know to start here and go down the little... Well, they're probably softer. But look at this. It's so cool. They're sweeter. Now, this is the first year you've grown these, yes. right? Yes, and you know what? These are very popular. Are they, These this are called what? The black tomato black miniature? Strawberry. Oh. Black strawberry. Look at big pods on this. So anyway, the rest of this is a mess. Pretty soon, I'm going to take out all of the annuals that I'm not really using um, or that just look like a mess, and I'm going to start. Look what you need to help me with. Look. I need to go pick those tomatoes, number one, because they're getting chomped on and the whole thing fell to the right. So we have a little bit to clean up there. Well, a before lot. we end, I definitely want everybody to see my garden because I did spend some time there this year. You know, that's the finale, baby. Yeah. That's you know? the finale. Go for it. I, I know you're very happy. You're going to give me some plants to put in this thing or what? I'm not ready for that yet. Maybe I'll sprinkle some cone flowers over here. You want some seeds? You can get go take some seeds and sprinkle. So here it is, folks. By popular demand, somebody was on his knees and got his hands dirty. Maybe Look at this. I, it's not perfect, but hey, what garden is? I have a couple holes back there. I'm definitely thinking about possibly putting a, a hydrangea or a hibiscus bush back there or something there's a couple hydrangeas you could put back there that would do well Invin what would you the, recommend the invincibles um like shade and they have those really big kind of really small floret um heads on them so those are really pretty um invincible ruby is actually like a pink one there's limet or little limetta I think I need some color. I need I need some cone flowers in here. Yeah, but I, you have to see how they do. You might get a little bit of bloom, but not like a ton because it's shady. Is there any colorful shady plants I could put in here to add some pop? You know, I got to compete against you. Well, look next door. Oh, I'll look, I'll look next door. I might take a few you from next take, door. You can take some lungwort, which will give you some spring color. Some peonies I could give you. Um, but those are spring color. You know, in the in the fall, you know, what are you going to get over there that's kind of shady? You could do Simisifuga. That'll give you those tall little plumes, little white buds that kind of go like a little, have a little arc at the end. Those are fall bloomers. They love shade, so that would work there. Um, I mean, the grasses alone would look good. I couldn't help but notice it looks like you have a few plants over there. What plants? Over there. Yeah. What what are those for? Those are fall blooming additions that have no home yet. Really? Yeah. I've had those for a long time. Hmm. They they dried out when it's... we went away, and I was hoping to revive them. And now I see that the um they're actually getting fried by this thing. But they dried out so bad they were literally like brown and and wilted down. And they are looking pretty good considering. I may even take the buds off. 
but this is called curtain call. They're anemones and they're short. Instead of the tall, invasive kind of spreading ones, these are kind of more clump forming and more manageable. So I was gonna plug those in. Don't plants breathe in carbon dioxide or monoxide? Yes, yeah, not that stuff, yes. Cause you could probably put them in front of your direct vent and it'll uh, help them get a little growth spurt. They're cute, they'll survive. I just have to get them in the, um, I have to get them in the ground. They would have done much better in the ground. I see your dog's uh, leaving some more garnish on the yard. Yeah, I don't know what this is. He's a maniac. Kind of looks like snake skin. All right, but that's it. So there's not really much going on. We, we finally got rain after what feels like months of not getting any. Um, you know, I'm going to hopefully collect a bunch of seeds. I, I, you know, it could be a little dicey at this point uh, based on our season, but... You can only do what you can do. Especially when you're camping all the time. We've been camping a lot. We camped two weekends and one five day, which you didn't even attend most of. You you did the weekend and we were there for five days and Brian showed up for the second half of it. But, you know. I'm not a snappy it's so camper. It's so fun. No. I don't mind camping. I just don't like the camping part. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? No, I don't. Yeah. That's the whole point. No internet, no, you know, nothing. You have to cook over an open fire. You sleep <clears throat> on a tent. I mean, in a tent, on a cot. We get harassed by wildlife. Yes. Little chipmunks do not leave us alone. But I did see giant swallowtails um, and a fritillary when I was up there. We were in the Adirondacks. And it, I, I was surprised because I'm like, oh, my God. Because there wasn't a lot of flowers around. It was like a lot of goldenrod. Um but it, we were in the woods, like it's kind of shady and not really sunny, but they they still found me. I saw two. I was I was thrilled about that. Yeah, and we had to share a campsite with an angry red squirrel. We did. We did. All right, buddy. Breakfast time is over, bud. Get out of here. Don't be alarmed. I saved you guys from a predator. What? We have a red squirrel that's out here terrorizing the campsite. You didn't hear him? I almost, I almost got attacked by him. And he keeps coming back. He wants the Cape Cod chips. But he won't take no for an answer. Uh, it's like you. Very cute, but boy, when it gets pissed off, you're going to hear it. 